Yeah. <coughs> Hi. Uh, my name is Juhamatti Niemikape, and uh, I'm from uh, University of Helsinki. And I'm going to talk to you about mosses and green roofs. So, uh, when I was thinking or planning this presentation, I was thinking that maybe I should make the topic as uh, provocative and sexy as possible. But then I realized that I'm talking about mosses. <laughs> but uh, I do realize that your lives don't revolve around mosses. Mine does. Uh, when you come across mosses, it might be usually when you have a building and you have moss on your roof and you call someone to get rid of it. So that's the, that is the uh, market that there is for mosses, how to get rid of them. But I'm going to tell you why you need the moss on your roof. But first, uh, some questions. Um, what do you think? To whom are cities built for? Any ideas? Just toss it away. To whom are cities built for? Maybe. Or for cars. Yeah. If you look at the cities nowadays, you can see that the infrastructure is actually built for cars. Okay. So then, to whom are buildings built for? People. Hey, it would be nice. <laughs> no, it's for air conditioning. <laughs> when architects start to uh, plan a building, their first thing is to make sure that the air goes in and out, not people in and out. Okay, and the last question is, where do you think uh, people like to be? Forest. <laughs> forest. <laughs> Yay, forest, okay. So not in the cities. When I want to go somewhere peaceful and quiet and where I want to be, it's not in the city actually, it's uh, in the forest as you said here. So when, when I was starting my PhD, um, I was thinking, Oh, sorry, now it hears, yeah. So I was, I was thinking that it was baffling me that the idea that cities are not for people and buildings are not for people and the place that people want to be is not in the cities. But we still have to be in the city. So how can we make the cities to be more for us? Oh, sorry? Yes, yes, let's bring the forest to the city. But then I saw this picture and many other pictures from the cities and you cannot bring the forest into the city. There is already the amount of forest in the cities that we can have. If I go and say, let's take the, this building down and build a forest there, they will, will say that, okay, that's not possible. So as you can see, uh, this is from Vatican City. It's not from Tampere. <laughs> it's, uh, it's full of houses and buildings, and there is some parks. But you, what you can see from here is that there is uh, uh, all of these buildings have rooftops, and it's unused space. And if you want to bring the nature into the city, we could use the buildings and the rooftops. They are near to us. It's unused, and it could be done. So. I started to think that maybe I should go into the green roof study. And then when I looked at the green roof study, this is what I found. It's a, it's a picture of green roof study. It has all the green roof articles that are written and their keywords in relate to green roofs. So if you go and uh, study green roof, you can have uh, biodiversity, you can have uh, climate change, you can have buildings, you can have pollution, and I chose mosses, yes. But yeah, it's a wide, wide scope that you can have with the green roofs. 
already. So it's not something that I'm starting here. It's something that has been studied already. Okay, so my uh, MOS studies, briefly, are four years of follow study on MOS growth and species inventories on, on different places, experimental rooftops, spontaneous MOS, ro MOS roofs, uh, experimental platforms, and soil nutrient samples. Okay, this is what I do, but I'm going to tell you something more. <coughs> so why would we need green roofs? And there is several points, of course, and this is just some of them. And it's always about the audience who I'm going to tell about the green roof. So in this case, I think I should be concerning about these things, aesthetics, urban farming, education, and health benefits. If I would be talking to city officials, I would be talking about heat island effect or the water management or something. But I'm happy to tell you more about those also in the later part, but let's focus on these points now. So we heard about the aesthetics already. Thank you. And I'm going to be really, really quick with this one. So that's like Wikipedia's thing about aesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> we just heard about half an hour how aesthetics actually is. So, um, But in my mind, the aesthetics of green roofs can be that people want to look at some nice things rather than dull things. And when you have green roof, you can have nice things there. So it's aesthetics, maybe. Yes! I got the <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. But what we are trying to do is uh, just copying the beauty of nature that it can do the best. It, it, the nature is it, it's beautiful. So uh, these are spontaneous, so they are actually what nature had, has done. We haven't done anything for this. So this is uh, from Tampere. Actually, these both are from Tampere, so they are actually quite nice. I think the owner of this uh, sports center doesn't want this building to be looking like this, but I think it's beautiful. Also, this is from a, from a bus stop or bus uh, depot, and I think they are tearing this apart because they don't like it, but I like it. So, when, when we are trying to copy what nature does, we do these things. We have a nice idea, and then we do something and then someone else does something, and we end up like this. So that's the problem here. So, so we have nice ideas, but there is no like architects and uh, people who are building something. You know, they don't actually know how to do it, so that we would actually like it. So, yeah. So, okay. From the aesthetics, let's go to urban farming. You can call, call it also uh, urban agriculture, urban gardening. <coughs> but it's basically the thing when we want to grow something on our rooftops that we can eat. It can also be animal husbandry, aquaculture, or really wild things. Maybe you can have a goat on your, on your uh, rooftop. But basically, m most often it's something looking like this. You can have bees making honey. I think in New York, they have their New York rooftop honey that they are selling. And actually, they are uh, at the point that they have so many bees at the rooftops that they, are, they cannot take any more because they are preventing the actual rooftop insects of living there because there's too many bees from the hives that they are bringing there. Okay, so we have always problems with the, with the uh, urban farming. And it's always about the common use of, of these things because someone is doing the planting and then someone comes and does something else and, and maybe eats something, someone else's things. So there is always problems in this urban farming. And that's why in our group we have done this case study in Jatkasari where we are trying to uh, maybe find some ways to 
deal with this. We have this participatory action research there going on. Um, it's where the, the researcher has this intervention first, and then she goes and co-designs with the inhabitants all the rules and how, how they could use the share, shared space and stuff like that. I'm hoping this will be a really, really nice paper when it comes out. So then the education. Um, if we would use green roofs as a tool for education, we could use it for ecology, for biology, for art, I think. And uh, it has, I think, limitless possibilities there. And uh, yeah, when when I was uh, yeah, let's see, when I was searching through this one, I came across with this uh, nice short talk from Dusty. It's um, a friend of mine who I met actually in Budapest last week. He is a president of uh, the European Federation of Green Roof Associations, so big guy in a field of green roofs. <laughs> uh, so, so let's see if we can hear what he has to say. It's one minute, so, so. Can you hear it? Is it possible to get it louder? Okay, so then he's going to talk about water and, and stuff like that. But that was the education part, so uh, <laughs> in short. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could heard that it's, it was from a school. It, there was kids talking loud. So it's an actual project that they have. It's a school with a green roof, and they are going to the green roof all the time with the kids. So it's really, you, if, you, if you have a biology, uh, class, you don't have to go 15, 10, 20 minutes with a bus to reach a nature. The nature can be there with you, so it's, it's possible to just go there, do your project every day, you don't have to go far. So that's, that's the idea when green roofs could be a part of education. Okay, so does it work now? No. Okay. S then some uh, studies about education and green roofs or something. So then uh, if you have a green roof and even a short glimpse at the green roof, you can have restored your atten attentiveness. So that would be really, really great thing, I think, in, in the schools, basically. And even if you have a possibility of have a green wall in the in the classroom itself, you could have increase of coziness and classroom uh, of the classroom. So then uh, and, and support the cognitive performance there. So those are studied things. Why would we not want to them be there? <laughs> okay, let's go into the health. So uh, for. Uh, old people, 
we have found that the visits to the green roof or green spaces or green with uh, access to green infrastructure at least is really good for them they they get so much out of the green roofs that they are feeling better they, they, the the life quality can be enhanced by the by the green roofs or the just the visits into the into the green spaces and then if you bring in the uh, uh, the sensory gardens and garden therapies that there actually there is so you can have that garden just next to your uh, like old people house the, the or the places that they they go to and it will uh, help them with the memory disorders or long-term patients really enjoy the access of, of, of green roofs and then when you talk about allergies uh, there is the soil for your schools that you were <laughs> talking about. Uh, so if you have soil, you can you, you get contact of the soil in, in er early ages, then it decreases the receptivity to the allergies. So there is the microbes and, and, and stuff. So basically, you sh we, are we are living in, in two clean uh, environments nowadays. And then again, the stress of relief, even short visits to green areas are shown to reduce stress. Then if, if we would have enough green roofs, we could have cleaner air. Locally it works if you have your uh, apartment, if you have your office next to a green roof, you might expect that you have cleaner air there. And then if you have cleaner air, you can, uh, if you have respiratory illnesses, you can expect to be, like, it's, it should be easier to be there. So that's, again, health. Okay, so now you're asking, okay, if we can have enough green roofs, or is it possible to, like, can you have a green roof on your building? Is it, is it really hard or something? It's not hard. It's not easy, but it's not hard. <coughs> and this is a project that we have been uh, with in, in, uh, in Jätkäsaari, Helsinki. It just shows that if you have the idea of green roofs and green spaces, when you're planning the actual building, you can have it. In this building, the access to the green was the first idea and the, the b basics of everything when they were planning this building. So all the inhabitants have their own uh, balconies with green and they don't have to actually uh, maintain the green there, but they have also uh, access to their own uh, balcony with, with, with which has uh, like these planting boxes so they can have it just next to their own house and then they have also this uh, these vines and, and, and all the other plants that are growing there uh, without their own own effort and then they have access to urban farming and greenhouse they have berry and fruit gardens they have uh, these biodiversity roofs and when they go to sauna they can go and cool off into these uh, biodiversity roofs and um, it's const constantly there the green is, is it's a part of their life in this building so it's possible all they have to do is when they are planning this they have to like think what the people actually want to so this is a building meant for people not for the air conditioning And you can go and, and, and see this building, it's, it's, it's ready, it's been there for one year now. So it's, it's not a concept, it's, it's actual building. So, and then the mosses. Now I've been talking about the green roof, but how about my mosses then? So, uh, uh, here you can see some spontaneous moss on, on some rooftops, so they are usually beautiful but people don't want it there because it's not meant to be there and can ruin their rooftops and it's yeah it's it's a problem it's a problem if if it's not meant to be there but anyways it's it's really beautiful 
so when we are building something with MOSSES, we can do lots of things that cannot be done with conventional, conventional uh, approaches. Like this uh, wall here, it's an actually, uh, it's a study, but also a small piece of art maybe that I made. So actually I named it uh, uh, ro Rolling Stone that gathers moss. So it, it comes down, <laughs> but, but it's, it's an actual study also. <laughs> to study how the mosses grow in this, uh, this, in this wall, how they expand or, or what, what are they going to do in the next two, three years. And yeah, then we have these really lightweight solutions like this toilet there on this sauna. So you don't have to build so heavily to like get the soil there. If, uh, if you use mosses, you don't have to have so much soil and, and stuff, so it can be really lightweight. So that's the, the plus for mosses uh, when, when you use, use them. Of course, you cannot have a garden with mosses, or then it's a Japanese moss garden, but that's well, basically this is a moss garden. So, <coughs> yeah. All right, so the time, yeah. That was my presentation. Thank you. There is some nice pictures about mosses in different places. <laughs>